The term smart home gets thrown around a lot because companies love marketing to you. But what smart home basically means is a connected house, that the gadgets in your house can kind of talk to each other using wireless communications like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Your thermostat can talk to a plug, can talk to your lights. That's pretty much it. There's a whole range of smart homes though. Everything from being able to utter a command and have the entire house change around that to just being able to turn your heat on when you're on your way home from your phone. We're gonna talk about that one, the not so smart smart home, but just like a modern update to where you already live. My house has DSL, so it comes in through the phone line. I wish there was cable modem, there isn't. So my router's gotta be here. This is what the phone company gives you for a router. Uh, the problem is that the wireless signal gets weaker as it gets away from your base station. Don't settle for that. These things are okay, but if you're gonna, especially if you're gonna have a smart home, you need to have a really, really like robust Wi-Fi setup. This is something from a company called Eero, E-E-R-O, and it's a router system that's actually using something called a mesh network, which means it's got a bunch of little nodes scattered throughout my house that pick up and amplify the wireless signal. This is important because a lot of your smart home gadgets are gonna be talking to each other via the wireless network. It just helps the communication between them. You gotta control your smart home from somewhere. It used to be that you could have a bunch of connected gadgets and everyone would have a different app or website or whatever you had to play with. But now there are a couple of really good options for just controlling something from one specific place. We're gonna use Google Home because Google Home is a really like easy, streamlined app, it's free, and it works with most of the good smart home products. This is how I can like turn on the lights from a vacation, like flick them on and off so like robbers think that I'm here playing with my lights, or I can, you know, turn the heat up a little bit if I know it's gonna get really cold out. We're gonna keep it pretty simple today, and we're just gonna add stuff like a thermostat. Set up new devices. JMF house, that's my house. Looking for, oh see this is where it all goes wrong. Is looking for devices and we haven't set up any devices. So, let's go set up some devices. Hunter set and save, one. 1993 vintage, obviously a legendary thermostat. And when it's got this like broken ass LCD in it, even more sought after. But just for the purposes of this video, we're gonna replace it with something from this century. With a 2018 vintage Nest. The idea here is, create this main zones thermostat as sort of center of the house. Nest is a motion sensing thermostat. It lets you program things in through a smartphone app. It's really super streamlined. What we're gonna do though, when we take this off, there's a little bit of a, uh, like a roulette wheel situation, which is do we have a C wire or a common wire? Common wire pulls power from the furnace in order to keep your, your thermostat on. These old ones, you know, they use a battery. Oh shit. I just turned off my thermostat. If it gets cold, I'm sorry. But modern thermostats are on Wi-Fi, they're motion sensing, they're running all sorts of programs, so they need a constant stream of power. I'm done. Oh, I'm just kidding. Looks beautiful. Thank you, thanks Tom. Um, I think we're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, you, uh, honestly, you can use a needle nose pliers for everything, so you might as well have one of those on you. And then I have a wire stripper here and a flathead screwdriver you know, for prying stuff. And I brought a voltmeter also because we're working with electrical. It's always nice to know if something has power before you shock yourself. All right, since we're being responsible, I'm gonna read the instructions. And also because furnace makes fire. Uh, switch off power, we did that. Some covers pop off, others need to be unscrewed. I'm looking in the back of this thing and if you look at the thermostat up close, um, you can see that there's like a red wire and a white wire coming out of the wall good news is that there looks like there is a blue wire tucked behind the wall here that may be our common wire. I really hope it is because that would be cool. I love this when you take something off a wall and you see that somebody has done just like a stupid job of making a hole in the wall. Like how much work is it really to make like a nice hole? Anyway, we have a common wire. We have a common wire, I'm so happy. <laughs> Which I'm very excited about because it means that my nest is not just gonna be like pinging my furnace for power anytime it wants to connect to Wi-Fi or whatever. I'm just gonna strip this common wire now. Woohoo! And now I'm gonna get ready to install the nest. And then this thing snaps into there pretty, pretty handily. 
common wire. Get in there. Hey, look at that. Maybe now, maybe we're just being impatient. Oh yeah. Woo! Hey, we have green light. Yes. You have to use a little like rotary to get it onto your Wi-Fi to select the password. And then it calls to the Nest servers. So once you put it on your, on your home network, it's gonna update its software as most little computer things do. Once it's charged up, we're gonna set it up with the Google Home app. One of the most common things people like to smart homeify are their lights. You can change colors sometimes for mood light. You can set up actions that dim everything for like a home theater experience. You can freak out your Airbnb guests. This is a bulb come from a company called LifeX and it's an LED light bulb but it also has a Wi-Fi receiver in it. Uh, and these things, you can screw them into your light and then just control them with one of your apps like Google Home or Amazon or anything. It's super easy. So now I'm just trying to get everything into Google Home. Right, the whole idea here is to control everything from this one app. So I'm now adding Nest to Google Home, which is a, like a little harder than it should be. I'm sure they're, they're unifying this stuff, but in order to add your Nest to your Google Home, Currently, you've got to go to Google Assistant, go into Services, go into Home Control, find Nest, and link it with Google. So it's, it's telling you my, my accounts are linked now, which is great. All right, so now I've got a pretty good smart home base. Nothing fancy, just be able to set the temperature from anywhere and have the energy efficiency benefits of a newer thermostat. And then the beginning of a smart light system. I think I'm gonna get some more of these LifeX bulbs. And that's really enough for people like me who just want like a connected house that's modern, but not necessarily something super duper, you know, whiz bang fancy. Um, because after all, who wants to just like bark at their house all the time? Not me. Google, turn off the cardboard lamp. Right, that's kind of fun.